Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome to be with us tonight. You are welcome to teach us. You are welcome to bring revelation to us tonight. Thank you, Father, for the power of your Holy Spirit that can live right inside of us. We thank you for that tonight, Father, and we just pray for each one that's watching and listening tonight that you will minister to each one right where they are, Lord, and that they would just reach their heart out to you and receive from you tonight, for you have a message for them. We thank you in Jesus' name. Praise hey the Lord. Hey there, sweetie. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's good to sing. Yeah, I love that song. <laughs> I was just getting ready to get lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't want you to get lost. You need to be here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So if you join with us, um, well, we want to welcome everyone, first of all, but if you joined with us last week, we were talking about, <coughs> excuse me, um, a scripture from Luke 24, and I'll just uh, quote that for you. Uh, and it said, and Jesus said, and now I will send the Holy Spirit, just as my father promised, but stay here in the city. He was speaking to the disciples until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. So uh, I had uh, mentioned a couple definitions of <clears throat> promise last week. I got a tickle tonight. <clears throat> and the definition of promise in the dictionary was a declaration or assurance than what, that one will do a particular thing or that a particular thing will happen. Mm -hmm. That's from the dictionary. <coughs> Oh, goodness. And then the biblical definition is an announcement uh, for information, for assent, or a pledge, divine assurance of good. So when uh, Father promised the Holy Spirit, it was a good thing he was going to do. And it's also a legally binding declaration that gives the person to whom it is made a right to expect or to claim the performance or forbearance of a specific act. So it's a legally binding de declaration. Uh, I think all of God's promises are going to be good. <coughs> Absolutely. Oh, my. Absolutely. Uh, you, you know, when you talk about the Holy Spirit, who, who, who is he? What, what, is, what is he about? Power. And, uh, <laughs> it, you know, I, I like to... Uh, uh, normally, we talk about God being one, and he is. God is one. And uh, the interesting thing, I, I, I believe that the Father and the Son, I always say this because I believe it, but the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit work so closely together. They work so closely Very together that... The only way that you can tell them apart is by their function and, yes. and by what they do. Yes. Uh, otherwise, it's really hard. They function so closely together. I, yeah. I, uh, I, I like to think of the father as as the brains, because because Jesus, <laughs> uh, you know, he doesn't do anything, but he sees the father doing it. He doesn't do anything, but he hears the father saying it, and and um, and, and, and the Holy Spirit operates in the same way he's yes. not doing anything without without the father either mm -hmm. jesus comes along and he's the visible representation of the father yeah wow yeah and and uh, jesus you know he's talking to his disciples a lot and i'm not sure that they have uh, uh, much of an understanding of when he's talking about the holy spirit um mm -hmm. but when the holy spirit comes along uh he he's doing things I, I I prefer to think of him as the muscle, yeah. as, power, as 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 mm -hmm. the power. Mm -hmm. He's the one that that enacts the the things. Uh, he's the one that <coughs> that uh, while Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit, Acts says I think it's Acts ten. He was anointed with the Holy Spirit, went about doing good and healing all that were sick and oppressed of the devil. Mm -hmm. 
So he's not, he's not working on his own either. No. And Jesus Je said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because yeah. he has anointed me <laughs> yeah. to do, yeah. you know, to do mighty things. So, so that helps me, that helps me uh, sort out their, their functions <clears throat> and their, their, mm -hmm. and their, their offices, if you will. But the fact is that they um, are, God is one God. Mm -hmm. And, um, but they, they certainly have, and I use the word they, uh, Jesus, or actually God, when in the very beginning says it like this, let us, plural, mm -hmm. let <coughs> us make man in our, there's another plural, in our image. Yep. Yep. And uh, I, I think that helps us in, um, in uh, relating to how they work and how they function. So when the Father speaks the promise, Yes, and that was way back in Joel, oh, and, yeah. and there are other scriptures in the Old Testament where, where they speak of uh, Father's promise of the Holy Spirit, but then Jesus said, I will send you the Holy Spirit, and, because and, the Father and Jesus are one. And, and, and that's not to say, you know, uh, sometimes you hear, well, we're all children of God. Well, actually, the truth of it is, we are all created by God. One God <coughs> created. Mm -hmm. God made, the Bible says, God made the heavens and the earth. And so when God says, let us, let us make man in our image, mm -hmm. you see, God created, all three were there. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit breathed life. Yes. And the, by the Bible says he, he, he brooded upon the face mm -hmm. of the There was that deep. power. But that would be the same... Um, brooding that that caused Mary to yeah. to be pregnant. Yeah, conceived of the power of the Holy Spirit. That was the work of the Holy yeah. Spirit for Mary. So that was the power evident. And then uh, uh, the uh, scripture that I was that I came across was in John chapter three and thirty four, and it says. <clears throat> we'll just look that up. Quickly. Yeah, you so can get, get your ready. Bibles there, folks, and oh, get yeah. your Bibles and look them right up. John up. 3 and 34. <clears throat> and this was John the Baptist. And he uh, says, For he, speaking of Jesus, is sent by God. Because we know that. For yeah. God so loved the world, he, he sent his son, he gave his son. And he speaks God's words. For God's spirit is upon him without measure or limit. And that's powerful. So Jesus has the spirit without measure, without limit. And so Jesus can then impart and say, I'm going to leave that Holy Spirit for you. Uh, I, I'm using the Amplified Bible. Mm -hmm. I just think it's louder. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, read it louder. Yeah. <laughs> For since he, whom God has uh, sent, speaks the words of God, um, in the beginning was the word, remember mm -hmm. John also mm -hmm. says that, mm -hmm. in the beginning was the word, and the word was That's God, and the word was with God. Mm -hmm. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made. Mm -hmm. For this says, God sent, uh, he whom God sent, has sent, speaks the words of God, proclaims God's own message, God does not give him his spirit sparingly. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Or, or, by, or, or by measure, <clears throat> but boundless is the gift of God. Boundless is the gift God makes of his spirit. Mm. Boundless. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I like that because... Uh, it also refers to, in this, it refers to the Spirit as a gift. Yes, yes, yes. He's always, because Jesus said, I'm, I'm going to give you, I'm going to leave the, you uh, the advocate that you talked yep. about last week. I'm, I'm giving him to you so that you're not alone. Do you know, folks, God is a giving God. Yes. He's done everything he possibly can do because he loves you. He's done everything he's going to do to provide life more abundantly. Mm -hmm. He is a giver. Of God, good. Of, God so of loved good. the world that he gave his only son.
But now you see there's another gift. It's called the Spirit. Yes. You see, and he's giving. Yes. He gave to Jesus the gift of the Spirit. He's Jesus is, is walking as, as man. Yes, he's God. But he's, he's walking in, in, uh, in the, the, the form of a, of a man with limitations of a man because Jesus is hungry. Mm-hmm. You see? Yeah. Jesus, he walked as a man just like He gets thirsty. Just like us. Mm-hmm. I, uh, this, is, this sounds awful, but when I was in Bible school, we were having this discussion and somebody pipes up and, and, and asked our, our professor, so, does Jesus have to go to wash him? Well, yes, be, because he's walking as man. And if you read the scripture, it talks about Jesus walking in an Abrahamic covenant. Okay? He's walking out. He's, at, he's our example of how you can anyone can walk in the Abrahamic covenant. And he's an example of how you can walk in the spirit. Yes. He is a perfect example because he, he did all. He had the limitations. He was touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Mm-hmm. So that means he's going through anguish. He has he, he, emotions. emotions. Yeah, all the we go through. Yes. So he. But he was full of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Without measure. Without measure. Without measure. <laughs> and then he says, "I'm going. I'm going to give that to you." Yeah. That's that's the Father's promise, that's and that's powerful. my promise. That's my gift to you. Yeah. So a lot of times people will try to understand um, about the Holy Spirit, and and often we go to a particular verse, and we're going to turn to it. It's back in John three again, um, and it starts at verse five, and or four. Let's say. <clears throat> no, let's go to three. <laughs> it was Nicodemus that came to Jesus in the night. In verse 3, Jesus, he replied, I assure you, unless you're born again, you can never see the kingdom of God. What do you mean, said, exclaimed Nicodemus, how can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus replied, the truth is no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life. But the Holy Spirit gives new life from heaven. So don't be surprised at my statement that you must be born again. Just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it's going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. So that, that, you see, when I said (coughs) earlier that uh, we are all creations of God, I don't necessarily believe that we are all born children of God. No. I, I don't think the scripture really bears that out. No. Uh, because the Bible does talk about Jesus said in, in, to uh, one group of people, you're, of, you're, 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 you're children of the devil. Mm-hmm. You're sons of the devil. Mm-hmm. So therefore, there, there's got to be children of God and there's children of the devil and there's mm-hmm. children of the world. And, 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 we have to believe. And, in and this is a, a different level. We, are all, we all have God's breath. Mm-hmm. See, spirit means breath. We all have That's God's life. breath. That's right. That's the ability to live. That is the ability <clears throat> to live. All of us, all mankind, has that God breath. But this is this, this is, is spiritual different. life. That's now. right. So this is this is being born again. Yep. This is salvation. That which is born Receiving. of that which is born of flesh has the breath of life. Yes. You see, now we're talking about being born of the spirit. A spirit, spiritual life. Um. So many times, just like we don't understand, we can see the effects of the wind. We see what it does, but where does it come from? And, you know, it's a mystery. Some of it is a mystery. Um, And the things of the spirit can also be as a mystery. Were you going to read it from your version, or or do you want me just to continue here? You're good so so far, because I think that part was already uh, said very well. That which Mm -hmm. is flesh is flesh. It's of the physical. Whatever is physical is is physical. Mm -hmm. Whatever is born of the spirit is spirit. Yeah, spiritually discerned. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know that the unbeliever will have everlasting life? but not in the same way. It's spiritual. actually spiritual separation from God. Yeah. 
sin, when sin entered the world, man, yeah, mm -hmm. Adam and Eve, when they sinned, that's how sin entered the world. And the life of God, when, when they no longer experience the presence of God, they no longer experience the life mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. Jesus came so that we would once again experience yes. the life yes. of God. Yes. And uh, <clears throat> that is the part that eliminates our, our understanding. Mm -hmm. Man is basically born of, of, uh, with a soul or a mind. He has a body and he also has a spirit. Just like there's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's there's, the part that's connected with that's God because right. he's a spirit. That spirit part of us is dead, really. There's no life there. When uh, an unbeliever, those that do not believe or follow Jesus, uh, are spiritually dead. Mm -hmm. There is no life there. And they have no communication with the Father, who is spirit, by the way. And um, so this experience... Uh, ignites that life. Mm -hmm. That's how I, I see it in any way. Uh, that which the spirit of spirit. Don't be surprised, he says. Don't be <laughs> astonished at, at what I'm telling you. But you all must be born anew. <laughs> mm -hmm. Born again. Yeah, born, born from again. above. So that's what people you know, talk about when you use that term, born again. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. We come alive. We come to life. So Jesus, when he walked on earth, he said, I am the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. The light was the light of men, right? It brought, mm -hmm. brought life mm -hmm. to men. Jesus, his sacrifice mm -hmm. on the cross brought, brought life to men. And so now Jesus is going to die. And so he's made the disciples a promise that the Holy Spirit is going to come, the power from, mm -hmm. from heaven. And he wants them to wait in Jerusalem until they would be endued with power. And when you look at that scripture, um, do you remember where that was found? I don't think I wrote that down. Uh, it might have been over here. <coughs> I can't find that right away, but he said to wait. Wait, that was, yeah, Luke 24. I already read that, right? Yeah. Um, so after Jesus made that statement, people started muttering and murmuring and questioning, and, and they were getting all uh, anxious about, well, what's, what's that going to look? Well, is he a prophet? Is he a, the Messiah? <clears throat> you know, well, what's, how is he going to do that? What's going to happen? And it caused quite a stir. Yeah, it did so. And... And I, I, can, I was just trying to <clears throat> imagine what the disciples would have been thinking. What does that look like when the, the Holy Spirit would come upon them and endue them with power? They saw Jesus function in power, miracle after miracle after miracle. And so, and so there, he said to wait, and, and, and then we're going to get this power so what does that look like? And I was just trying to imagine, you know, okay, well, what do we do now? One scripture says they went to the temple to worship. And another said they returned to the, the room where they all, you know, were going to gather. But what does that look like? What is going to happen? And it, and it kind of reminded me of the season we've been in. <laughs> it's like, what is going to happen next? And, you know, what, what is God doing? What is the Holy Spirit doing in the middle of this? And what's that going to look like? Some, some prophetic words have come that uh, there's going to be a powerful uh, revival. Yeah. Um, and then the, and the closer we get to the, the return of Jesus, um, you know, that there's going to be a great harvest. And the Spirit of God is, is moving, is still moving on the hearts of people. You know, what's, what's interesting, Shannon, is that, you know, on the day of Pentecost, there was a sound from heaven a mush, a, a rushing mighty wind now here's this an interesting scripture we didn't quite get there in John chapter 3 the wind blows the wind blows or breathes where it will and you hear its sound mm -hmm. 
Yet you, you neither know where it comes and from where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born mm-hmm. of the Spirit. How does that happen? <laughs> how, how is our spirit made anew? That's a mystery. Yes, that, it that's is. That's a mystery. But we, you see, we, <coughs> excuse me, we only see the effects of the wind. Yes. Just the other day, there was a, a very strong wind. And uh, it knocked an awful lot of pine cones off, off, the, yeah. <laughs> off the trees yeah. onto head. the ground. We saw the effects of what the wind can do. Many people see the effects of a hurricane or a tornado, powerful yeah. winds. Yes. But you don't know how where it's coming from. And it, it's just air moving. Like, there, there's no physical substance to it. So we have a hard time understanding wind. Mm-hmm. We're trying to um, uh, use the wind for windmills you know, the, yeah, harness the wind. We're trying to, that's yeah, the word use the power for. of the wind. We're trying to harness mm-hmm. the power of the wind. Folks, you cannot harness the power mm-hmm. of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> no. Wow. No. You can't harness. You you would best just give up control and give him, give your life to him because he'll help you with your life, with every <laughs> part of your life. That's just the way it is. You cannot stop wind from blowing. No. So when the wind of the Holy Spirit uh, begins to blow, oh, it's that's that's surrender time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, instead of yeah. fighting time, yeah. you know, that's surrender time. And, and Nicodemus has a hard time w- mm-hmm. with this. He really does. Uh, Nicodemus answered by asking, "Well, how can, yeah. how, how can this be possible?" Well, Nicodemus is no no different from the rest of us. We're all asking, how does this work? How did Jesus do the signs and wonders and the miracles that he did? How does, how does he do this? Yeah. Well, it's the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus replied, you're a teacher of Israel. Yeah. And yet you, you don't know nor understand these things. Are these things strange to you? Yet you see. Yes. So in 1 Corinthians 2 and 14 it says the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit no, of God. No. So the natural man is our own mind, yep. right? Our own thinking. And it says they are foolishness to him. But if you stop with just your mind and think about it for a moment, it you can't imagine it. It's foolish. And how how the wind would blow it, how the holy spirit would cause a young woman to be pregnant. How does how does yeah. that happen? Yeah. How, how does how does the Holy Spirit, you know, cause a person's spirit to be born again? And it says their foolishness to him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Yeah. They can't know. Them. No. no they, Not in the natural. No, you, you you know you can't. Like I said earlier, with the wind. We have a hard time. We can harness the wind. We can try. Mm-hmm. But there's still parts of the wind. It's just like the, the work of the Spirit cannot, Shannon just read it, cannot be, spirit, uh, cannot be um, naturally. naturally or mentally um, discovered. Mm-hmm. Is or, that a good word? Or... <laughs> I don't know what the word is. <laughs> yeah. uh, we just can't figure it out no. with, our, with our natural. Because... You know, when we believe in God, it takes faith, right? Yeah. Yeah. We have to have faith. You, I can't rationally reason, you know, and figure out God. I have to, by faith, believe. And it's, very, it's the very same way with the Holy Spirit. Right, it, right. It's That's right. The spirit part of me has to come alive. There has to be a, an awakening. And, and that's done by the Father. And, Father. And, and really... Um, you can't be born again without the awakening. Mm-hmm. And, and really, there, there's one portion of scripture in the book of Acts. I know we're jumping ahead, but, but they said, uh, have, have you received the Spirit since you believed? And oh. they were Christians, all right. Mm-hmm. But you see, there was another experience in God that they hadn't. They, they, they were, were saved, all right. They were, they were baptized in water. 
yeah. and they were believers, but they hadn't experienced the fullness of the Spirit. There it was, yet Jesus walked in the fullness mm -hmm. of the Spirit. Without limit. And, and, and something, that, and a power that was without limit. And, and he says, you know, guys, uh, all the power and authority was, has been given unto me. I'm going to give it to you. Mm -hmm. you, you see, mm -hmm. and uh, but our uh, we our understanding has to be enlightened for for these things because mm -hmm. some of this just isn't going to make sense to those that are not yeah. born again or. or and we school. talked about this uh, when we were talking about the disciples in the boat, yeah. and and Jesus kept saying, "You still don't believe, you still don't get it. What's going on?" And and I always think of Peter when when Jesus. Uh, finally confronted him and said, well, who, who do you say I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. That, that wasn't just your thinking, <laughs> you know, that you came up with that on your own. Uh, but my father has revealed it. My father in heaven revealed it to you. And, and I think there's something else that, that Jesus said to Nicodemus that he said, you need to be born of water and of the spirit and some people think that that water is being born that, that water natural. baptism oh okay some people believe that's it's natural, natural. Birth. Mm -hmm. some people believe it's water baptism personally i i honestly believe that it's that it's talking about born of of the word because we are washed by the washing of the word mm. of god mm. And then you see we're born of the Spirit, and you, and you need the both together, the, the word Spirit and, and, the word. and the Word. That's right. Because right. the Spirit comes along and brings life to the Word. Right. Right. <laughs> right. There's a scripture. What, what is that scripture that talks about uh, uh, the, the letter kills, yep. but the Spirit brings the life. life. Yeah. You have to have so, the Spirit so to bring, if it's to bring just, life. If it's just a bunch of words and a bunch of knowledge... Um, you know, and any of us can study, can study the word, and, and, and that's a nice word. But until um, the spirit comes and brings it life to to my situation or or, or whatever he's trying to teach me, um, then it it's just words. Now you know I I'm not going to suggest to you that um, I'm the only one that's right. There, if, if you believe that um, um, water is the natural birth, that's okay. God bless you. If you believe that, that uh, water is water baptism, praise God. God bless you. <laughs> it's just I happen to believe that. And we can still fellowship. And we yeah. can still talk yeah. about this. And this is awesome. But we are washed by the washing. In fact, we were born by the incorruptible seed of what? Of the word. Of the word of, of God. Of the word of God. <laughs> yeah. See, yeah. See, that word is really important, and and it's important to us in in uh, in the working of the Holy Spirit too, because He always works in conjunction. He's always there to glorify the Son. He's always there to bring uh, enlightenment to the Word. So, uh, there's a scripture in, and I think we read it last week, John 14 and 17. Um, Let's turn to that, John 14, 17. And this was Jesus speaking. Uh, 16 says, and I will ask the Father, and he'll give you another advocate or yep. counsel, counselor who will never leave you. He's the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world at large cannot receive him. Because it isn't looking for him no. and doesn't recognize no. him. So they do not have that spiritual discernment. No. The world, the, the unbeliever, do, does not yet have that no. spiritual discernment. They can. That's one of the reasons why they, they crucified mm -hmm. the Lord uh, Jesus, because mm -hmm. they, they didn't recognize him. And then it goes on to say, but you do, and he's talking to his followers, believers. You do, because he lives with you now. And later, we'll, we'll be in you. So we're talking about a totally different thing. Yes, we are. That's right. We're talking about the Holy Spirit, not just being with them, but in them. How, how is it that, you know, Jesus said, I, I'm not going to leave you orphans. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm not going to leave you desolate. I'm not going to leave you bur I'm But he's bereaving. leaving. How can he say that? He's, he, he's, he is, because he's, he knows he's, he's leaving. He's leaving. And, and the disciples are going, what's this, you're leaving? <laughs> well, yeah, you're going, and then another scripture says he tells them, you know, I'm going, and then I'm going to come back. I'll never leave and, you. <laughs> and, you know, and then they're like, well, if he's going, and he's coming back, and then he's going again, how does that work? You know, so many questions, I'm sure, going through their minds. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to leave you, orphans. I'll come back to you. And, and so I'm sure they're just wondering, how is this going to work? How is this going to work? It's interesting, too, that he calls the Holy Spirit the spirit of truth. Yes. Yes. You see, uh, God, we, we've uh, discovered God's not a man like a man that he, that he lies. Mm -hmm. He is all about truth. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I, I'd like to read this section here, Shannon, from verse 16. I will ask the Father and he will give you another comforter we talked about yeah. this yeah. last week yeah. because another comforter uh, Jesus was also there as comforter mm -hmm. you see Jesus was also there as an advocate as an intercessor he was going to become an intercessor especially um, seating at the right hand of the father the spirit of truth the world cannot receive or welcome they cannot because they can't take it to heart they can't recognize it. They can't, they can't recognize it. It's foolishness, like that other scripture yeah. said. It's foolish to them because, because they, they can't see them. You know, it's, it's interesting to me how scripture um, really, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you have one scripture, but then you have another scripture, and it says almost the very same thing mm -hmm. as the as the. As, uh, it's like it's out of the confirmation is the word I'm looking for. Or Bible witness. says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, mm -hmm. every word is established. God is about to, he's always about establishing his word. Mm -hmm. He's going to send a promise. Praise God. Mm -hmm. He was going to send a promise. And that, and that promise was going to open their eyes, you see, mm -hmm. so that they can, um, they can, uh, handle again the word of God and they'll remember again the word of Jesus mm -hmm. you know so so he says uh, he lives with you now yeah but later he's going to be in you and if you turn to John 7 and 37 Oh, let's go. Let's go back because this was the, this was the funny conversation. Um, Thirty-three. Jesus told them, "I'll be here a little longer, and then I will return to the one who sent me. You will search for me, but not find me, and you won't be able to come where I'm going." <laughs> so they must be totally confused. <laughs> and the Jewish leaders were puzzled by this statement. Where is he planning to go? They asked. Maybe he's thinking of leaving the country and going to the Jews in other lands, or maybe even to the Gentiles. What does he mean when he says, you'll search for me, but not find me, and you won't be able to come where I am? On the last day, verse 37, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, if you are thirsty, come to me. If you believe in me, come and drink. For the scriptures declare that rivers of living water will flow out from within. Yes. And when he said living waters, he was speaking of the, the Spirit, Spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered into glory. So this is another experience here. We, mm -hmm. have, we have the breath. The Spirit gave breath to us, which is life. Right. The Spirit um, causes us to be born again. So we have spiritual nature. We we're have, born again. Yep. We have, we have enlightenment. And now we're going to have something flowing out of w within, within us. It from just reminds me us. of an old song, you know. Yes. Spring up a well <laughs> within <old>. my soul. <laughs> Spring up a well and overflow. Yep. Spring up a well, stir up in me. Something like that. Your life abundantly. Yes. 
Yeah. Or that's there's a river of life. There's a river of life flowing, flowing out, out from, from me. me. Yeah. That we could really get on a rabbit trail of songs. No now. rabbits. No <laughs> rabbits. So this is another whole experience. So this is what Jesus is talking about when he says to the disciples, "I want you to wait." Yeah. For a promise. This is this is more that I have for you. And some you know, sometimes I've heard people say that, you know, the the power of the Holy Spirit and what happened in Acts was for back then. It's not it's not really for now. But my goodness, if if God promises something to me, I want it. I don't want to say, oh well that one wasn't for me. Well, you know, I, I think it was Peter when he said this promise is for you. Mm-hmm. And for your, uh, yeah, yeah, we're getting ahead of ourselves, I know but we that, can talk but, about but that the, next that week. That promise, mm-hmm. this was a promise oh, yes. given by Joel. That's yes. all he was doing. Generations was, before. Yes. Generations and, before. And talking about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this is going to be something that comes on your sons and your daughters. And old guys will dream dreams. And <laughs> you know, young, young guys vis- are going to yeah, see visions. visions and, and, and uh, on your handmaidens. Yeah, yeah, we're going to talk about that next week. So, we're you know, closer this, to Pentecost. this was a promise that was given not just to a selected few. Right, right. You see, and uh, that's why I, I pulled out that scripture because yeah. I, I yeah. think it's important for us. Um, the outpouring just wasn't for um, the, the apostles. Yeah, it says right here. Um, it says, uh, la, 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 la. When he said living water, he was speaking of the Spirit who would be given to everyone yes. believing in him. That's right. Not just the disciples. No. Everyone. But there, I mean, are, there are some that believe it was only for the, for yeah. the, for the disciples, yeah. but history oh. shows that it, 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 uh, there was more people. I that, don't want to be left out. No, I I, 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 I did want to be left out. I want to have that, that spring bubbling, bubbling, bubbling. But here's the, here's the key. If you're thirsty, come yes. to me. If you're hungry, yeah. if this is something that that, you know, Father has promised me, Jesus has promised he would leave the Holy Spirit and then I would be endued with power, then I want it. What do you suppose it means when it says um, that you, you'll, um, though that if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be mm. filled. filled. Yeah, hmm. filled, satisfied, hmm. yeah, overflowing. Hmm. <laughs> More things that we can look at another time. Yes, you're right. <clears throat> so, when we think of, of the disciples, and now they're, they've been told to go and wait in, in, in Jerusalem until they be endued, endued with power. And I think during uh, these last couple of months that many of us have been waiting. We've been in isolation, and, and things have been so different. And what, what have we been waiting for? Oh, do we have to wait? I can just <laughs> see the disciples. Oh, do we have to wait? Oh, come on, Jesus. Why do we have to wait? Why, why not get her now? Let's get her done. Yeah. You know. You know. Well, and you said uh, when you were reading that that there were some 500. Yeah. Uh, he appeared during that during that 40 40 day. In between period. his death and and re- and uh, yeah, or from his resurrection and his ascension. That's right. He appeared to some 500 people mm-hmm. all, all at once. But only 120, 120 end up waiting. Yeah, where were the rest? We, you so asked what that happened? question. Yeah. What, <coughs> yeah. It's a great question. And there was a, in, in John chapter, and I, I don't want to go on and on, but in John chapter 17, uh, Jesus prayed for himself, but then he prayed for his disciples. And I believe he knew. He knew the trial that was ahead of yeah. them during that, that period of, uh, you know, that he was about to die, but then from the time of his resurrection and his ascension, there were still other things going on there, you know, and then he tells them, I'm going to send the Spirit, and they're like, what does that look like? What does that mean? You know, but I think by that time, they had, their eyes were beginning to open, and they have a, more of a revelation of who he was, and, and, that, and that they would trust him, and he said, I, you're going to remember this. Remember this. Remember what I just told you. Well, isn't there, there that part too where <clears throat> he breathes on them? Yeah, that was a really interesting scripture. Where was where was that? Uh, let me see. 
Uh, that might have been John 17. Mm. Or it might have been in. Oh, no, here it is, John 20. <clears throat> and uh, Jesus appeared to the disciples when they were behind locked doors. Verse 19. Uh, that evening on the first day of the week, disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Yeah. And suddenly Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. And as he spoke, he held out his hands for them to see, and he showed them his side. They were filled with joy when they saw their Lord. He spoke to them again and said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. I, had, I didn't remember that scripture before. And then he says, If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you refuse to forgive them, they are unforgiven. <clears throat> and when I read that, I thought, what's the connection there? Why is he saying suddenly that they need to forgive one another? But what laid ahead was his death, his resurrection. So people would be saying, well, I thought you said he was going to do this. Well, I, th you know, I thought this was going to happen. And you said, and he said, and perhaps... There was a lot of friction and things going on. And, well, they used to believe, but now they don't believe anymore. Yeah, and there's now, 500 people that were there, and where are they? Yeah, where are they? How come they're not here? You know, there could have been all kinds of fleshly things going on. Reason that they needed to forgive one another. It, and it is interesting because Jesus, in one place, um, he says, whatsoever you um, bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever is loosed on earth mm -hmm. is loosed in heaven. It's the same principle. And when you, when you read the context of that scripture, it has to deal with the way that we treat one another. It has to deal with binding and loosing. It is not just something that you do for an exorcism or something. Mm -hmm. Binding and loosing is actually having to do with forgiving, forgiveness and unforgiveness. Yeah. And when you... When you uh, uh, retain unforgiveness, you're bound. Yeah. When you retain that okay. unforgiveness, it blinds you to truth. Yeah. But when you receive forgiveness, Jesus said it like this, freely you have received, freely give. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, Jesus is, is, is uh, showing them when he's breathing on them, I personally believe that he is prophetically speaking into their potential now yes to receive because of what will transpire in the days to come mm -hmm. he is he was there is a prophetic action if you will mm -hmm. uh, when <clears throat> when Paul the apostle was was being sent out um, the the prophet uh, bound him you remember binding him that was a prophetic act yeah uh, there are times that Jesus, he did other prophetic acts. This happens to be one yeah. where he breathes on them <laughs> so that they can, can uh, um, uh, and also it opens the gate for whose sin you re uh, retain, it is retained, and whose sin you loose, it's <clears throat> loosed. You know, so That's a work of the Holy Spirit. That is a work of years the Holy Spirit. Years ago, and, and I'm going to end with this, but years ago, um, there, there was a, a situation in my life, an individual or several that, that I needed to forgive. And the challenge in God's word is, if you don't forgive, neither were, right. will your Father in heaven forgive you. So I knew it was a command to forgive. And so I chose, I made the decision to choose to forgive that person. But the emotions... And the hurt that I had suffered from that person's actions or words or whatever was still very real. And, and I, I remember saying to the Lord, I choose to forgive, but you have to do the work of healing my emotions and healing that wound, healing that scar in my, in my soul, in my spirit. And that is a work of the Holy Spirit. Yes, it is. That's what he does in us. That's right. Because yeah. <laughs> he lives in us. Yeah. 
And, and so that, uh, you know, that's the connection. That's another work of the Holy Spirit to work in our spirits, not just to be born again, but to heal, you know, areas of, of unforgiveness. This isn't a fuzzy good feeling that you have. You, you no, know, I, it's a mystery you, how he does that's that. That's exactly right. I mean, I remember the, pa the, the preacher prayed for me and I spent some time on the carpet just, just waiting before the Lord and I got up and it was just like, I'm free. Like, how, how did that happen? I can't figure that out with my mind, but I know he does it. It, it really does, uh, friends, it really does take, we sang the song, Welcome Holy Spirit. You know, um, it, it's an invitation, mm -hmm. really, for the Holy yes. Spirit to work you in come. our life. You come. He is a living fountain. Uh, uh, and out of your belly, Bible says, mm -hmm. out of your belly will flow rivers living water. of living water. I, I really it's think that uh, we'll, we'll pray, and then after we pray, um, I'll go to the piano and, and we'll uh, end our, yeah, our we'll study sing, we'll and sing we'll sing you that song yeah, again. Yeah. Why don't you pray, dear, okay. for those that are, are watching and, and okay. to, to thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Father. You promise us good things. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us if we have not hungered and thirst after those good things that mm. you want to give to us. Forgive us, Lord, yeah. for ignoring what you want to give to us or just dismissing it. Oh, we thank you. Thank you that you have given us your Holy Spirit yeah. to that we are born again, but also that we are filled to overflowing with living water so that we can share with others, yes. we can pass on to others, Lord, what you have done for us and so we thank you father that you sent jesus and then jesus sent holy spirit to be with us to never leave us never forsake us we are never forgotten we are never alone and father i just pray that you would bring that revelation to someone tonight that yeah. they are not alone you did not leave them orphans you did not leave them comfortless you did not leave them to fend for themselves, but that Holy Spirit, you want to live in them and flow from them yes. and empower them. And so I just pray you bring that revelation, Holy Spirit. You have to open our minds. Right. Uh, our words are empty without your work, Holy Spirit. Uh, so we ask that you would just do that this evening and bring right. revelation. Thank you, Father, for sending Jesus, your only Son, Thank you, Lord. to Thank die you, on the Lord. cross for us. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Thank you. 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 I ask that you would open their eyes of our listeners tonight. Yes. You eyes would open their ears yes. so that they will see that you love them. And they will hear your voice Thank you, Lord. that you love them. Thank you, Lord. And you would soften their hearts so that, Lord, that they'll just desire, they'll turn Hunger, to you. Thirst. And just uh, as you uh, said to Nicodemus, that they could be born of the water and the spirit, spirit by your word spirit and by God. your spirit. Yes, We've spoken Lord. your word. Now you quicken your word by your yes. spirit to them yes, and bring life to them. Thank in you, Jesus, Jesus' name, give them the courage. Thank you, Lord. Give them the courage, Lord, to believe you, the faith Thank to you, believe Lord. you Thank for you, their Lord. salvation. You are. Praise you, Father. That you provide. Praise you, Father. Thank in you, Jesus. Jesus. Name. Father, I just bring every family to you, and you know the things that they are facing. And I, we lift them up to you today, God, that you would be present with every family family member, Lord, and where there is strife or discord or discontent or other things going on, Lord, would you, would you send a yes. messenger of peace yes. into that situation, God? Yep. 
that you would still the storm that's going on inside of individuals tonight, yes. Father. That you would bring revelation of your power, O oh God, and your great love to, to deliver them from that yes. storm. We thank you, Father, even in our Jesus province, Christ. that you are making a way yes. for us day by day. You are, you are working and making yeah. a way for the church to meet once again, to gather once again. And we look forward to that day thank very you, Lord. soon, Lord. We pray that you would encourage those who have been lonely and lo those who are really missing everyone. And God, that you just wrap your arms in Holy Spirit, just wrap your loving arms around yeah. them tonight and encourage them and strengthen each one, God, and we look forward to what you have for the future. We look forward to rejoicing together yeah. in the power that there is available to us in your Holy Spirit, and we thank you for that, Lord. Bring, bring, <clears throat> bring breakthrough in the lives that are, are yes, broken, yes, lives Lord. that are broken, those thank that have you, addictions, yes. uh, oh, those that, that are bound yes. up, Oh, with, Jesus, uh, Spirit of God. The, the, all kinds of different things. Spirit of God. We ask the Spirit, Spirit of, of God, God that you would um, break through, oh, give them breakthrough praise in Lord. Jesus' name. Praise you, Lord. You will praise restore Lord. broken marriages. Oh, God. Broken homes. Oh, God, open eyes. Yes, in Jesus' name. Spirit of God. Thank you for sending people Thank of you, faith to them yes, in Lord. Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. We'll Service. be careful to praise you, Lord. You are so good. Thank you. Thank you for our time Thank together. You. Thank you, Lord. We Jesus. Bless you. Bless you. Just as Ron goes to the piano, we're going we're gonna to continue to sing that song again. Welcome, Holy Spirit. And uh, just want to remind you that uh, uh, Thursday evening, we're premiering a, a story by Gerald Gable of how he came to faith in Christ, how he became born again. And uh, you'll, you'll hear, you, you'll be able to figure out that it, it, there was, the Holy Spirit was working in, in his situation. And then uh, Friday evening is gospel music uh, night with Pastor Ron at 6.30. Uh, so you'll enjoy that. Get your, uh, get your hand clapping ready and, and rejoice together. And then Sunday morning again, 10.30, we'll be live streaming. So let's just close out this evening and... and with That's the all. Holy Spirit, we are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power, live inside of me, you're the living water, never drying fountain, comforter and counselor, take complete control. joining us on our live stream Bible study night. Good night.